Good morning, Vikings fans. This is Morning Joe's, brought to you by Grey Duck Vodka. Grey Duck Vodka, get the duck out. I am uh, Joe Johnson, owner and uh, pimp slash magician, as I was called on Twitter, of wow. uh, purpleptsd.com, vikingsterritory.com. I and think that's something territory. worth com. Yeah, that's a, that's something worth aspiring to. Pimp slash magician. A hmm. pimp, a pimp magician. Yeah, something. Uh, uh, that's Joe Oberly. He is the main man, the OG, the the lead editor of those websites, and apparently a prophet because he saw the writing on the wall before a lot of us did in regards to the AAF, but. We are going. We have some, you know, uh, some news. This won't be as long of, as of a show as we usually do, um, but there's still some some good stuff worth talking about out there in Vikings land. But first and foremost, oh wait, Joe, don't don't sell us short. We can fill up uh, uh, <laughs> time very easily. I can interrupt you for for 45 minutes. And, oh, to, uh, you know, <laughs> we always uh, every time we think it's going to be a short show, it goes long. And um, I'm I'm relatively new to like the Vikings Twitter sphere. Like I've always just promoted articles and stuff, but I haven't really gotten in like into debates and, and meeting people and so on and so forth. Or kind of developing my own um, handle as a writer, more so just promoting the network. And yeah, I uh, I'm really even though they doubled the amount of characters, I'm really struggling with the uh, 160 character limit or whatever it is. <laughs> so I like the sound of my own voice, but how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, digging out of the mess from that you always have when you go on vacation and and preparing for another one. But uh, I was gonna say not, not anything anybody else cares about. I guess that's just my deal. But uh, yeah, uh, no, it's good. You're always like in between vacations, which aren't we all? I wish. I don't even know the last time I went on vacation. Well, you're between um, that one and your next one, whatever it was. So you're ice and we're all in between vacations. I like, te- technically, yes. I like the idea of vacations, but I'm the type of person that would just rather be home. I guess, like once I get to a hotel, I just am like, ugh. I'm a homebody myself. Uh, my wife really likes to travel, and 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 I do, but uh, I like coming home and and. Uh, and, and, and working and, and, you know, taking care of stuff. But uh, it's good to get away, but it's always good to get home. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think you just have to figure out how to get that balance and, and and make it work for yourself. And so that's kind of an announcement, too, because I think next week we're going to have um, a, a kind of a different schedule, or at least we're going to try to. I want uh, Joe will be in Florida, it sounds like, next week. So I'm going to... Try to figure out a way to have a few of the draft expert guys like Kirby O'Connor on the show next week to do like a deep dive into draft prospects. Kirby's been writing these amazing draft prospect uh, articles that Bleacher Report has been picking up uh, for different places and different positions. So we'll, we'll delve into that a little yeah, more than, than we're doing. Joe, I'll be in Florida scouting out uh, draft prospects for the Vikings if they happen to, <laughs> if they happen to show up in my foursome. So you know, if they're there, I'll check them out. Are so. you going down? Is that your annual Mark Craig trip? It is. It is. Wow. The Fubar. It's, it's it's late this year. That's why it, it's uh, because of my other trip. We had to postpone it, and we're getting into uh, April here, and it's Masters week when we're down there. So it'll be fun. But it's uh, usually it's it's right after Mark. Craig likes to do it right after the Super Bowl. We go down there and and we used to visit his brother and we a bunch of us would get together and play a little golf tournament. It's a lot of fun, a lot of golf and a lot of BS, as you can imagine. So. Uh, it feels like you just went on that trip. Hmm. So I remember a story from that that is we can't talk about on the air because it's really cool. But yeah, God, that just seems like it was about a year ago. A couple weeks ago. Well, it makes sense. Time flies when you're miserable. That's right. Speaking of miserable, um, the Vikings <coughs> have made some moves, uh, moves that surprised some of us uh, on the staff, uh, namely in the signing of um, they added another guard yesterday. 
Dakota and, Dozier. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like Brian Dozier? Or he's, he's Brian Dozier's older brother, I take Could it? Could be. Long distance cousin. You know, you never know. I have no idea. Um, yeah, what did you think of that? I, I, I was surprised. Know, I, like, I, well, Sean, uh, well, Sean Borman wrote the article late last night, and he was surprised too, just be in that I don't know what the terms of that contract are, but I didn't think they had any money left to do anything. You know, they still have to cover those rookie contracts from the draft. So it was a pleasant surprise. I mean, he's a deft guy, so I'm not expecting him to start. But as we've seen, these backup guys end up playing for some reason with with this uh, line. So, uh, you know, I'm happy. Any depth going from what we had a couple weeks ago, which was one guy, to what we have now is is good. It gives them a little more flexibility for the draft, but I still want to see them go pretty heavy towards towards guards in the draft as well. Yeah, I see it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I see it the same way. You know, I, I wrote a story last well, after they signed Brent jo- Brett Jones and uh, you know, I, I thought you know, I was surprised they hadn't used him as uh, that much last year. I I, yeah, I don't know how much how much they liked him. So, uh, it almost kind of smacked of a little desperation on the offensive line to to get him in. I think they needed to do it. But, you know, I'm not sure it, it's a it's a huge signing for him. Uh, this this next one with the Dozier on on the heels of that makes it sure seem like they they know the situation on their offensive line. I mean, you make a good point where they get the room to do it, you know, but uh, uh, they had to, and they're going to get bodies in there. And they're, right now, I, I consider both those guys depth guys, so I, yeah. I, I too would would like to see them get a. A Brian O'Neill uh, for an interior lineman early in the draft, someone that can just step in and, and, and play. And I, I know that Brian O'Neill isn't the uh, the savior. For, consider that such for everybody on this uh, purple PTSD or even in Vikingsville. But uh, um, I think you know you hear keep hearing all these situations about the line where they could even bring uh, put Riley Reef in as a guard and then take yeah. a tackle in the draft. And if if that's you know if that's the the idea the best player available is is a left tackle, then I would say grab him and do that maybe. You know, uh, yeah. uh, I don't I don't want him doing I don't want him reaching for a, a guard, uh, but uh, I, I do want them getting an offensive lineman, you know? I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean you would think just I'm not that far into my draft prep but you just think logic dictates that there's a lot more guards at 18 than there are tackles you're probably right to the point where you could even maybe trade down which a lot of people are talking about doing unless there's somebody that you're just like enamored with then i say just you know don't get too cute and just do it um but i'm trying to think whether reef has ever played guard you know, he played both tackles for Detroit, and it, it seems like to me he did long ago, maybe even college, but I, I you know, I, I didn't, I don't know for sure. So, no one should quote me on that, and I should probably look it up after the show. I'm but looking I, at it right now, so far go. nothing. Um, you know, and two, these guys are all different. I understand that, but Rembers had experience playing guard, and it didn't work out. And Reef, when healthy, is is a serviceable guy. Um, I I know they've wanted to potentially move on from him, shed that contract, and maybe move O'Neal over there, uh, which we've talked about a lot on this show, and both of That's us are, are, are kind of against, you know, just because he's doing well at that position, yeah. why why flip him if you don't have to? Now, I don't know that it was the Vikings that wanted to do that, but people have certainly yes. uh, uh, thrown that out there, so... Um, yeah, so you know, you look at stuff like this. I, I, you mentioned with Brett Jones that it was a desperation pick, and I was at first confused whether a <clears throat> pickup rather that that uh, you were referring to the signing this time or last year, and then I figured out that you meant this time. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I have to agree with you just in that I maybe I was I was wrong when they got him last season, but I had different expectations for him. Um, right. Coming in, I thought you know he is. I think one of the was like a top five player in the CFL when he was up there. He went to college in Canada, so he kind of wasn't on a lot of people's radars until he was picked up by the the Giants. 
Um, but he's flexible, you know. I, I kind of thought of him as like a new uh, Berger, perhaps. And, you know, I know I'm, I'm really going to go against what I said about not getting too cute right here, but I do like the fact that, you know, you look at um, Jones and Klein and both – and okay, so both of them – have played left and right guard, so that you have that option. I think Klein mm-hmm. is, is penciled in at the left guard position. So and Jones is the center. Yes. And so um, that's actually my point. So Elf, I, I know a lot of people don't like this, but Jones, if, if you go to um, the Twitter account of Nick Olson, who is uh, a periodic writer for Vikings Territory, and hopefully will be the co-host of About the Labor here starting pretty soon with Sean Borman. Um, he posted a lot of tape of um, Jones in the run game, specifically as a guard, and pointed out a lot of his li- flaws and the liability that he brings to that position. And basically the point of that and the point of what I'm saying is, is that he's a much better center than he is a guard or he's much less of a liability at center than he is at guard and I do think that elf line could be really really good at the guard position it might take him a while to remember everything he hasn't played since his junior year at Ohio State but you know uh, that's a big school they play a professional style offense so I don't think it'd be that hard for him and so if push comes to to shove if you put him jones at um at center and elf line at guard i think you'd be better off than doing it the other way around i don't think they're going to yeah i don't know they brought him in because uh elf line was you know at the beginning of before training camp ended last year because elf line you know had not returned from his injuries his off-season injuries so they needed a a center and he started the first three games i believe before he uh gave way to elf line so um, they brought him in as a center, and maybe they are thinking of him, you know, as a center uh, in the scenario that you just talked about. But then I look at the contract, and it was a one-year contract, so they're not thinking mm. about long term in any, unless this is just a prove-it year for him. If if if, if that's going to work, it, if if he if that's his better position, stronger position, he certainly had more experience at it, and you can move Elf Line to one of the guard positions, and I and you know I have. No problem, Elf Line picking it up uh, the guard position if if that's the case. You know, it takes as a center, it takes something off his plate and and maybe makes him a bulldozer over there for for uh, for the run game. But uh, if that's the case, all suddenly we're we're pretty strong at guard. You bring in a, a, yeah. a rookie in the draft and that that you really like that you you know a blue chipper. And you you groom him, and maybe you don't have to throw him to the fire like O'Neal last year, and 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 suddenly uh, you've got some depth there, and you can pick and choose and and, and do what you want. I, I I you know I still like to see them. You know maybe maybe that would then allow them the depth at the guard position. You know, and they can draft one later maybe, but take that take a a great left tackle at the with the first. Their first pick, maybe trade yeah, up and yeah. get get somebody. I don't know. I, I, it's got to be all offensive line intensive in the in the first day of the draft, and and uh, um, I think this strengthens the Vikings' position a little bit. But it's still such a, a thing in flux. We'll have to see what's happening. Yeah, I mean, having options is a good thing. Again, compared to where we were a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean Borman's article about Dozier. He this is where we're at with the line he put in the article. So the placeholder starters. Riley Reef left tackle, Brett Jones <clears throat> left guard, uh, Pat Elfline center, Josh Klein right guard, right tackle Brian O'Neill. I was, I'm surprised by that. I thought Klein would play left guard, maybe. Uh, well, he could play either. So yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, so at depth we have Rashad Hill uh, at tackle, Aviante Collins tackle, Isadora guard, Dozier guard. Cornelius Edison, center, Storm Norton, tackle, Adam Bisnowati, tackle, and well uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a professional. And uh, he makes the note that the Vikings had eight offensive linemen on their active roster at the end of last season. Um, 
And so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I just... I'm not enamored with with the, the situation. I don't. I wouldn't be very happy if we were going into the season with this roster, obviously. But again, they've made something out of nothing, a few somethings out of nothing, and so that that's a good sign. You know, it it does scare me a little bit though, just because I feel like having some semblance of an actual offensive line setup might entice Zimmer and Spielman to say, hey, well, let's go, you know, defensive line or let's try to get, you know, oh a lot my. of people are oh talking my. about uh, t- a tight end. That seems to be the position du jour. It really is, yeah. Lately that they're going to be going for a, you know, a pass catching tight end. Now, I... um. Second round, I, I would love for them to have another option in the tight end position that can catch passes. If they could actually run some two t- tight end sets and you know switch things up a little bit, get two big guys in the red zone, that would be awesome. You know, obviously, I don't think they're going to be sticking with Kyle Rudolph uh, for the next four or five years. Uh, but yeah, I just I worry that maybe their eye is no longer solely fixated on the offensive line just because historically that means weird things happen. Mhm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's a uh, it, tight end position certainly is getting a lot of steam. I hope I hope these signings aren't what you just said a way to uh, 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 um, allow them to step into best player available and, and yeah. get a def- defensive lineman which you know they they could use. Um, and yeah, you know, I think it's a draft is pretty uh, a deep and defensive lineman too, I think. I'm not sure. I have haven't been studying it up as well as some others have, so I, I, I can't say for certain. But uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're an excellent conspiracy theorist, and, and it and it could, <laughs> it could actually be uh, moving that way. They they put so many bodies on here, no matter how good they are, and the offensive line say, yeah, yeah, we did we did stuff to do the strength yep. the offensive line, so we can go quarterback. Yeah. What more do you guys want? Ugh. That's the big fear with, I, I'm uh, pretty, pretty sure, 99% sure we'll be doing the day two draft party again this year, which will be Friday the 26th. And I was talking to Adam Carlson, the head honcho over at the Viking Age on Twitter, sliding in his DMs the other night, and I invited him to that, and he wants, he's probably, he's basically going to come, but... We both came to the conclusion that if things go sideways, it, it could go from being fun to just being like Stephen Colbert doing the live coverage of the 2016 election where he ended up drinking an entire bottle of scotch live on the air because <laughs> things happened that he didn't expect. Um, It'd be uh, like uh, Geraldo Rivera uh, opening the, the vault. <laughs> there was nothing not- in Al Capone's vault, but that wasn't yes. Geraldo's fault. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Simpsons quote. Um, where do you stand? And just so for the record, I bought my nieces two parakeets. Nice. And so you'll be hearing them in the background. They just woke up, and they uh, were a huge mistake. So where do you stand on this uh, backup quarterback situation? You know, there's the adage with a lot of teams, but with the Vikings especially, that the most popular player is the backup quarterback. And a lot of people have been saying, you know, why is the team bringing in these guys uh, for the backup position? Why did they bring in, you know, the uh, Sean Mannion, the, the Rams guy, when we have Kyle Sloter? And I saw someone go as far as to say that Sloter, the Vikings would have had – at, at minimum, the same amount of wins last year, and at best-case scenario, two more wins had Sloter started last year, which is just insanely stupid <laughs> of an argument. It's just, got it. My response to that was, do people, for, like, do people think that, that uh, Thielen broke those records by himself to start the yeah. season? You know, like, where do they think that came from? And why do you think that that stopped happening? You know, it's 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 a what are, it's definitely a what have you done for me lately league and position and just society in general. Um, 
but that drives me a little crazy. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't think Slaughter is the the worst option as a backup, and that they, I do think they can, especially with the compensatory picks that they got, they could probably snag somebody later. They don't necessarily need to, br- you know, uh, bring somebody in, um, especially with how things are going in terms of money. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> There's like five questions there. <laughs> I <clears throat> has Slaughter played in a regular season NFL professional game? Uh, no. Um, you you said it earlier. The, he tore the, it up in the preseason down uh, in Denver. Don't even start. Don't even start. It, it uh, uh, and, until we see him have to do that, uh, you can't really judge him. So I, yes, I know the unknown is always better than 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 what yes. you got right in front of you. Yes. There's just no question. It's way. It's it's human nature. It's certainly. Uh, NFL fans nature and so I get that um, I'm a little bit uh, uh, given that that we haven't seen him that you know we know Slaughter's got a strong arm and that's a little else uh, I I am really disappointed they haven't gotten somebody else in there you know a professional uh, a, a professional uh, uh, sorry about that no professional uh with experience, quarterback. established guy. Thank you. Yes, like yes. you had last year, because you know, you know dang well if they don't do that, that's when uh, uh, Kirk Cousins goes down. It's just going to happen. You know, yeah. last year they had they had a, 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 someone who started in Simeon. They had someone who started in the league elsewhere, and he could have stepped in and and held the place while Kirk Cousins got, came back from an injury. But now. No chance. It's, it's just. I'm sorry. That talk about a conspiracy theory or whatever. Or, no, or, it, it's. I mean, look at Bradford. He got uh, the season that the Vikes started five and zero, oh, and then everything <clears> fell apart. He was getting hit left and right, and then you know he gets hurt when there's some semblance of protection. It seems like that happens. The, the season where the guy, the QB, is getting hit left and right, he's fine. But when they finally get a line in front of him, they go down for whatever reason. So I completely agree with you. So um, given that you, you you want to see him get somebody in here, I guess I don't want him to just be anybody. And maybe that's you know maybe it's a good thing they didn't give a man Mannion or Manning whatever his name yeah. is a contract. If they don't like him, that's fine. But uh, you, you need somebody in there with some experience to step in. You know that, that's all there is to it. Johnny Football. No, 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 no. Oh uh, man! Speaking of Johnny Football. Um, you had sent me a text this morning saying that we, in in the same vein of questioning as, as what we're talking about now, that the Vikings were going to be working out uh, Brandon Silver, who I believe was the starting quarterback for the Memphis Express and then soon to be shuttered forever, AAF. And, God, it's such an interesting topic, and there's a few things we should delve into here. But mainly, um, I saw an article that the NFL sent out a memo to the team saying you can't talk to any of these players because the AAF hasn't technically completely folded, even though it's going to, even though they sent out a tweet saying the NFL has every right to talk to any player they want to because we're basically done. But until they're technically done, I think the NFL is just going to be a little um, protective and, and... and not start those that process until they know 100% instead of 99.9% that the league is going to fold. So that's yeah. so, that's something that um, might throw a wrench in those gears. I'll let you take the AAF thing because you were, as I said earlier in the show, uh, prophetic in your presumption. I won't call it an assumption because you had evidence in, in regards to what you're about to say, uh, <laughs> that the league uh, folded. Well, I was just never uh, on board until you see it. You know, a little bit of. You know, sound like I'm repeating myself, but we. You know, you, you got to see it play out to see if it's if it's got any staying power because this has happened so many times before. i you know, I you know, I got to be honest. Every time I see the acronym AAF, I I get I think about this acronym that's the other AF acronym that you see in social media. Yes. And, I, I'm, uh, I'm it, AAF is basically how I feel every time the Vikings make a draft trace, anxious AF, you know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I think that's the, that's the way it, it's a perfect acronym for this league because everybody that signed a contract with the AAF should have been anxious AF, but, yeah. uh, I, I just, you know, 
everybody was excited. And it's more football, and I got it. But I was just saying, oh, let's let's just slow the roll here and just wait and see. If, you know, it was it was different because the NFL was involved, so so yes. it had it had more of a chance. But I am so I am surprised as well that it didn't even make the entire season. Or they got yeah. two left or something. That 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 to me was really surprising. But yeah. you know, the NFL is such a juggernaut. You know, it just. I, people, I mean, look at what's going on right now. I mean, you got when, when the season ends, I think everybody takes a breather a little bit, gets starts getting fired up for the draft, and they watch basketball and hockey, and and they really do enjoy it, you know. And they start getting ready March for baseball. Madness. Yeah, so I, I didn't, I didn't watch a game. I didn't think that, no. uh, you know, I I knew the the kind of uh, uh, football we were going to get. Um, so I, it just didn't grab my attention, but you know, I, I'm sorry. Any that league it where Ch- Trent Richardson gets three, four touchdowns a game is probably not that great. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and and you know, it it really tells you like, um, it, it the NFL is is the cream of the crop. I mean, it, it almost makes you think like these are college. It's you know, when a player plays in college and does well, and he gets all people get all jacked for him for the draft. Sometimes you got to consider who he's playing against because he's not playing against NFL caliber yeah. teams where everybody's a great player. He's playing against, you know, uh, a pretty decent group of guys and a bunch of slappies, you know, that, that are, they're filling out a roster. And that's, I, I don't mean that literally. They're, they're, they're all decent players, and they're, but they're college students too. So I don't know. I, I just uh, – I had that conversation I'm, last night with, with uh, somebody at the liquor store. These guys that played for like and one basketball that looked like unstoppable – and why only like one of them had ever ended up having a decent NBA career. And he was a, a bench warmer. Uh, I forget what his name was, but outside of the fact that they were basically traveling on, on most of their moves, it's, it's, you're right. It's the level of competition that they're playing against. Right. So it, you know, it's, it's too bad. I don't want to see anybody lose their job, but uh, we can kind of see it coming. And I wonder if they'll stop trying to do this. You know, I, I don't know. It'll uh, be interesting. We'll stop the XFL. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if uh, if they are able, the NFL is able to sign in these players, and I bet they will because we all know individually there are players out there. Adam Thielen was not, you know, as undrafted free agent. Yeah. You know, there there are uh, there are players out there that that maybe can help a team. So, and, and I hope it happens for them. But uh, by and yeah. large, the comp, the the play the play wasn't that great. You know, my initial reaction was, why would you go into this? as a businessman when there were so many variables up in the air and it looks like the biggest thing that killed the league they wanted to be a farm system for the nfl but in doing so they needed access to what they wanted and i completely understand the nfl not wanting to do this i think a lot of people are interpreting this as the NFL, like, trying to stamp out competition, and I don't think that's what it was. Um, no. They wanted access to practice squad players because practice squad players technically can play in other leagues. And so let's think about if you're the – the number one thing you don't want if you have a good guy in your practice squad is for other teams to take him. So why would you let him – a risk injury, first of all. Second of all, display how great he is for the other 32 NFL teams by joining the AAF. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just it wasn't going to work on that level. You know, it, there's sub, there's a lot of subterfuge in the NFL, and so that was my biggest roadblock. And then you get this other aspect of this main investor who sounds like just a great human being who apparently, you know, invested like – 300 million dollars and just because he wanted the 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 app technology they were developing to create some sort of betting system or betting app and i refuse to believe that that there wasn't an easier way for him to to go about doing that (laughs) you know you can get some like really really talented it guys that will reverse bid on jobs online from India or Pakistan and and build you things for pennies on the dollar. Like I don't understand why he had to involve eight teams and get all these guys hopes up and pay salaries and the logistics and uniforms and hotel stays and flights just to get an app. It's in, it's insane and it is yeah. very it is awful to do that to people. 
Um, you never want to count out the the uh, uh, the siren song of the NFL, whose stamp was on this league. So, you know, maybe like our our, our current president of the United States, who wants you know, wanted that NFL team so bad and had to end up in the XFL and, and helping drag that, that league down. This is the same kind of thing here where, you know, maybe they just saw, you know, I, granted he wanted the app, but maybe he also saw his foot in the door uh, as maybe a future NFL owner. I'm sure a lot of them thought that, you know, if you get in the league, it's with partnered with the NFL, boom, that maybe you can work yeah. your way to – so who knows? I mean, you make you make a great point. He probably could have gotten that stuff cheaper, but I'm thinking there's got to be something else. Or how yeah. does this guy how does this guy have this much money in the first place? If he he's gave? that stupid and he makes yeah. those types of moves, no, you're completely right. It it is a great. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as it, it's not anymore. The NFL isn't. You know, you look at Robert Kraft buying the Patriots for a then record 164 million dollars. Um, what the wealth's paid, which I believe was under six hundred million, and what the teams are worth now, you know, no single person is going to be able to afford an NFL team, right? Unless, unless you're Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. <laughs> um, it's going to be a committee thing, you know. It's just unattainable. A lot of the stuff's unattainable. I went to the freaking auto show two weeks ago, and all the cars were like a hundred thousand dollars. And ten years ago, there was like one one hundred thousand dollar car there. Wow. Just like you know, just like a suburban that's really decked out and it's got all the bells and whistles, but it's like, man, what is happening? And wh- why am I not making this kind of money? Um, and so, yeah, well, you're I working see- on it, Joe. You're working on it with this website. So I got my gonna- foot in the door. I'm gonna start. Here's my new plan. I'm gonna start a farm system for the NFL <laughs> um, because I want a a new color layout for the website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last thing I wanted to cover because it makes me very happy is um, if people haven't seen us talking about this online, uh, we are partnered with BleacherReport.com now and Apple News. Uh, so if you get your uh, Vikings news through Apple, we should be on there by next week at the latest. But one of the top stories in the Viking section of Bleacher Report. Actually, the the main like two above our stuff is uh, related to the Packers, and there was a story written. I wrote the author's name down because this is one of the best articles I've ever read. Uh, his name is uh, Tyler Dunn, D U N N E, and the the headline was "What Happened in Green Bay," discussing the tenure of Mike McCarthy and. Uh, you know, the career of Aaron Rodgers. And the article, I really highly suggest that you do read it. I will link a uh, link to it in the article for this show on both on all three sites, actually. PurpleTerritoryRadio.com being the third. And what was really great, I mean, it was a lot of stuff that you knew, but the level of it, I think, was surprising even to me. And, and Agreed. The, you know, the biggest surprise was some of the things that ex big name packers had to say about Aaron Rodgers namely and Greg Jennings and Jermichael Finley um Jer- yeah uh so y- y- this the, the story basically starts out with kind of on Rodgers' side or from his perspective and how he would tell people that <laughs> that McCarthy had the lowest football IQ of any coach he had ever had back oh, to, to high school, that he would run plays that worked maybe one out of 50 times in practice during the games, and basically that he would have to bail out the team by audibling or turning nothing into something. Um, that they ran the same plays for his tenure to the point that Vikings defenders were before they even got to the line saying, "Okay, they're running this play." They would jump. They would end up jumping routes. The example given being this slant route they used to throw to Cobb that was just deadly for a year and a half, and then it was just impo- it didn't work. But they kept running it, um, and so a lot of it was about Rogers' frustration with McCarthy. Yeah, but- that seems to be the whole gist, you know, about the, the, that they were their, their relationship was more fractured than than we knew. Yeah, and the other angle being uh, a lot of people saying what a bad leader Rodgers is, that he's extremely sensitive, that he blames everyone but himself. Um, uh, One of the ex-scouts for the Packers called him arrogant, 
and that he's not as smart as he thinks he is. Um, oh, God. Uh, Greg Jennings said ultra-sensitive and the main source of toxicity on the team. Wow. Um, well, you, you got to consider that self and, self and, Yes, I know. Uh, self-entitled and bad leaders, what uh, <laughs> Jermichael said. And so uh, beyond that, they said that you know this should have been a Patriots-esque dynasty. They should have won six rings, I think was the number that they put out uh, arbitrarily. Um, God, but they weren't that good. No way. You know. <laughs> Come on. And, and, they could have won one or two more with Rodgers. And, you know, they should have had another one, I think, somewhere down the line. But they weren't uh, They weren't that good a team. And, I, you know, I, I don't think they had the coaching staff to, to, to do that kind of thing. And either. they pointed out, too, that um, Ted Thompson was falling asleep in meetings and stuff like that. Um, and so I think it was maybe if they had different ownership. But the the point I've always had with this, and and then I'll get your take on it, um, is touched on a little bit, and it was kind of that the team ended up being doomed by how good Rodgers was because McCarthy otherwise would have been fired, but because he was good enough to get them to eight, nine wins every year, make the playoffs eight years in a row, that you're not going to fire that guy, especially after you, he wins you a <coughs> Super Bowl. So it's, you know, I'm not sure how hard Rogers lobbied. It sounds pretty hard to get him fired, but it's, 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 you know, it's, uh, I love it. <laughs> Joe, I, th- I think, I think that we should be telling fans that coming next week, there's going to be a, you're going to have your new podcast on the, on the radio network called the Packer dysfunction podcast. So <laughs> people should look for that because it seems like you're really excited, but I knew I was throwing oh. fresh uh, red meat to, a. Uh, to a Packer hater when I when I pointed that out to you this morning, yeah, but yeah. Uh, um, I, th- I thought it was worth talking about because, uh, like you said, the level and, and that that surprised me. We all knew that there was you know a, a relationship that was fracturing and and uh, uh, you know you can see uh, you can see the the, the look on uh, Rogers' face a lot of times on the on TV when when something didn't work or he didn't get the right play he wanted or or what have you he he. he you know, uh, RB, RBF, you know, they say it's another acronym. I think Ro- Rogers would have that when, when he would, uh, uh, <laughs> look over to the sideline. Yep. I've been uh, accused of having that too. Uh, it, it's, uh, I didn't think it was that bad. I, I always gave maybe perhaps, uh, M- McCarthy more credit than he might've deserved. I think as, as the time went on, it, it seemed like, Everybody in Packerland was starting to turn on him. I mean, if you went on any websites over there and you, you checked it out, that he wasn't, he, he was being really buoyed by, you know, two great quarterbacks, you know, first Brett Favre and now uh, uh, Rodgers. So uh, I, I think he had, to, and I got to the point where I was hoping they'd keep on keeping him because I think, you know, he was part of the problem. It, it, yes. It's, it's incumbent upon Aaron Rodgers now to do something, you know, at, I saw a quote yesterday in reference to the story and some all stuff online that uh, Mark Murphy or what when they uh, uh, when they who's their new coach LaFrenz or Matt something Matt Lafleur Matt Lafleur he said to him when uh, he uh, Murphy said to Rogers when when they signed him he says we're signing him please don't be the problem oh so you know and I don't know I mean in this day and age of fake media and everybody finding something throwing it on there and, and running with something that may not have been vetted or, or or verified you don't know any of that's true I mean it, uh, how would anybody find that out if they weren't standing there when when it was said so and so take it with a grain of salt but if that's the case then there's there's uh Rogers has got some skin in this game too he's got some yeah. responsibility here on, on on the demise of this team I I'll, I'll go back to my point earlier I think they, they had a good enough team at some point to win another Super Bowl, for sure. They, they, they probably should have been in it when they lost uh, to the, to the what's-their-names, the Seattle Seahawks on that, that, that overtime uh, onside kick debacle. They should have been in the Super Bowl there. there. There should have been others, but, you know, to someone to say that they should have won six, I, I just, there's just no way. But. Yeah, it does, it does make me wonder, like you said, um, the the process of hiring Lafleur, how much, how involved Rogers was. There was a lot of stuff last year that there were decisions being made without Rogers that 
you know, they fired his, I believe, his quarterback coach without asking him, which seemed odd. Um, and, and McCarthy was still there at that point, so that made sense. But, <clears throat> you know, it does make me kind of concerned that, that maybe the Packers will be better than I thought they were just because apparently McCarthy was <clears throat> completely inept and that was kind of making them Rodgers play with one arm tied behind his back. And right, right. we'll see what happens, but... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the best way I can put it is we've now had – we uh, brought in a couple new writers this week. One, if if you're a Vikings Twitter guy, he goes by uh, Optimistic Vikings fan, which means he's like my complete opposite. And uh, he actually was a Packers fan growing up and, and said that he switched. He didn't say why, but it's similar to uh, Roger, who wrote for us for a while, who – like in his 50s, made the switch because he didn't like how they treated Favre. And so I think, like you uh, like you said too, there's a lot of dysfunction. And some people just got so sick of it that for whatever reason they, they jumped to, to the Vikings, which, uh, you know, what, uh, I'm, we have a big tent. Come join us. <laughs> and and uh, as the Packer fans that don't defect will remind you, a big tent, but with nothing in the trophy case. So, <laughs> I, uh, so we have a new merch store with shirts and hats and, and you know, uh, aprons for barbecuing. And uh, one of the shirts I want to make is I'd rather live in Minnesota and never win a Super Bowl than live in Wisconsin and win one every year. Well, the thing is, uh, there's so many people that would just counter that by saying, Heck, I live in Minnesota, and I'm a Packers fan, and you know they just come across the border because they live or work in in Minnesota, and then run back across the border yep. and and, and in, near the Twin Cities. So, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it's 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 always a battle. It's a great rivalry, and it's it's uh, it's so it's worth talking about here. But I don't Definitely. I don't want us, I don't want us to turn into a, a Packer preview with uh, Dave Sinekin here on on the show. So yeah, you know I am one of the people that. You know, I, I see some people online that don't like some of the back and forth that happens, and I think that it's what makes this so fun, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, it's rivalries are, you know, football more than anything else is the other sports is so tribalistic anyway, and it, so it's 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 just part of the fun. You know, the, Wisconsin and Minnesota are, like, as close as two states could be. It's just, we just happen to have been either born or raised or whatever here, and this so... Makes- it's just fun to rib them a little bit. This this makes for a good off-season story. There's no two ways about totally. it. Totally. And there's so many Packer fans around the country. Uh, every everything you every story you put online with this kind of stuff in the headline, well, you're going to get clicks for yeah. a while. So big time. So you better you better write that story after we're done here, Joe, and get it up on our site so we can get some <laughs> book, book made up there. Uh, so yeah, like I said earlier, we'll uh, try to be back next week. I will make some announcements on social media and stuff so everyone knows what's going on. But hopefully next week will be a, a deeper dive, uh, like a roundtable in regards to the draft, who's going to be available, why the Vikings should take them, what we think they're going to do. Versus what they should do, so on and so forth. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And then I believe, Joe, you'll be back the week after that. Yep. Yep. And hopefully I'll have all kinds of intel on the Vikings draft yeah. choice. You know? No, I'm certainly going to talk to Mark Craig and see what he thinks. He's a Star Tribune writer, who's a friend of our show. We got we got to get him back on here. I'm, I may have yeah. to talk to him about that this week. So and uh, let him know about the day two draft party. Uh, once I confirm it, I'm actually calling uh, your dream location. I'm hope we're hoping to host it at Top Golf out in Brooklyn Center. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to work. I'm pretty sure that we are going to be running it with somebody else, which would be really awesome. So. Keep an eye out. I don't want to confirm anything until it's 100% confirmed, but uh, we will let you know. That'll be Friday the 26th, probably starting around 5.30 or 6 p.m. Uh, and like I said, we'll be back next week. But definitely, go if you're looking to try a new vodka or you know, even if, if you're not, consider uh, Grey Duck Vodka. It is the vodka of Chad Greenway. Uh, they are in almost a thousand stores now across minnesota north dakota south dakota and now iowa so you can go to their website grayduckspirits.com put your zip code and it'll tell you where you can find it near you i did a unscientific taste testing at the liquor store that is a client of ours i bought a bottle and 
let people try it because I actually am six years sober uh, ten days from now. So I that away, dude. Care. That away. I am the best, and everybody. Um, I don't know if it's because I was staring them uh, in the eye the entire time, but everybody said they really, really liked it. So it's uh, it's a really good vodka. It's gluten free. It is handcrafted and it's organic and it's all Minnesota made, bottled in Iowa. So. I think people will like it, uh, but this has been Morning Joe's for April, for Tuesday, Friday, where <laughs> am I, who is this, for Friday, April 5th, we'll be back next week, thanks for listening, Skull.